All children naturally assume and believe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow the hecking down there, buddy boy. All the children? All? I don't know what you are about to say, but children assume and believe a wide variety of things about everything all the time. Many of them pretty silly things that come from nowhere to boot. I can only assume you have never interacted with a kid if you didn't know that. And secondly, even if every child had the same but random base assumption about reality, who gives a goddamn? They're kids. Kids are stupid. There's a reason that they don't have toddler Timmy at the head of a quantum physics class talking about string theory. We live on a level, stationary Earth, with the sun, moon, and stars revolving over and around us. Oh god, I just realized you're Eric Dubai, and this is a flat Earth video. God damn it. How does this shit keep happening? I swear I don't go looking for the silliest of videos, they just keep appearing in my editing software. I'm pretty sure it became sentient in 2020 from the sheer amount of concentrated stupid I was pouring through it. Oh well, all kids think the earth is flat you say. I would posit that most kids don't even consider this idea for a nanosecond. And even if they did, well, what do they say about assumptions? They make Jack a dull boy. Well, something like that, I don't know. But the earth isn't fucking flat! Because that is what we actually experience every day of our lives. We do. That's weird, because when I plug all the numbers and variables and such into my scientificing machine and ask the question of how does am the earth work, it keeps spitting out a spherical shape and calling me an idiot for some reason. Although it does that regardless of what I ask it. I think it's trying to tell me something, but I just can't figure out what. Probably because I'm too smart for it. I did try feeding one of Eric's videos into it once, but it just shut down and a strange black liquid started oozing out from under the screen. I assume because of how not bonkers the video was. No children before heliocentric indoctrination would ever assume or believe they lived on a tilting, wobbling, spinning oblate spheroid, hurtling incredible speeds through infinite vacuum space. I mean, they might not come to that conclusion all on their own, unless of course they did the experiments for it and proved it for themselves, but you don't need indoctrination to believe that, you just need to have it explained and understand it. Obviously the second part slipped past you, hence the flat earthery, but yes, that's pretty much how it works, and no going about saying it with disgust or talking about how people who don't know dick all about anything wouldn't come to that conclusion apropos of nothing is not going to change that fact. But it's a fun admission on your part that your beliefs are childish, so thanks for that. Because none of that is present in our lived experience. Look, okay, let's just argue that you can't do things without sciencing to discover that the Earth isn't flat. You can't see boats vanish over the horizon. You can't see shadows cast by the sun being different in different places at the same time. Or any of the other incredibly simple observations that can be made. You can't do any of those things that make zero sense on a flat Earth. Not because you couldn't, just that you are, well, you. But just because you don't know how to check beyond your most basic observations with other pretty much as basic observations doesn't make your conclusions more correct. It actually makes you lazy and stupid, and that is no one's fault but your own. Only after thorough indoctrination through mainstream media and government education do children slowly begin to abandon their actual, natural, everyday lived experience of the world. Only through education do children stop being wrong and stop relying on their faulty senses and instead rely on empirical data and observations beyond It kinda looks flat though! Two observations like, hmm, these things don't make sense if the Earth is flat. Maybe there is some other explanation. Yeah mate, that's totally indoctrination. And I'll tell you what isn't. The umpteen zillion flat earth memes that all boil down to government lying, everyone am shills, and if it looks one way, then there is no other explanations. Facts be damned. And adopt the new imaginative model espoused by their teachers and televisions. Yeah, no, it's not imaginative, it's how it works. You saying repeatedly, it had made up, has no impact on that. The hilarious thing about flurfs is that they say earth not glob lol 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 and all they have is stupid inaccurate memes to support them. Everyone else says no, it is, it's not flat because countless reams of evidenced arguments and the only reply is those things not true cause earth am flat. 
and then you run off into the woods to live with creatures of near your intelligence. I say near, it's obviously still above. The squirrels, not theirs. I remember the moment we began studying the solar system in elementary school. You remember the very moment? Doubt. Considering the things that you believe, I strongly suspect that you can't remember how to tie your own shoelaces, let alone something that happened years and years ago. At least the first time, because you were probably taught it again several days ago, as I assume you are still being held back. How you have time for YouTube, I've no idea. And we're taught that Earth was a giant blue ball floating in space, spinning circles around the sun. The entire concept sounded ridiculous to me. That's cuz right. You were an idiot, and I fear that nothing has changed, because as most people who hear something about how reality works that doesn't seem intuitive to them, they seek to learn how it works so they can understand it. You on the other hand, do anything but that. You seek to confirm your already held beliefs any way that you can, and any information that shows counter to that belief is ignored and mocked but in a way that shows you simply don't know what you are talking about, especially to those who do. And I bet you wonder why people think you are so silly, Eric. As I sat clearly still and motionless in my chair, while being told the ground beneath me was actually tilting, wobbling, rotating and revolving many thousands of miles per hour in various directions. Eric was incredulous. He scoffed at the flight attendant's assertion that they were in fact flying tens of thousands of feet in the air, moving at hundreds of miles an hour, when clearly he was sat in his seat, motionless. The only explanation was that the world around them was moved and they remained perfectly still, as evidenced further by the turbulence that was obviously the moving ground bumping into their container. He smiles wide, allowing a large glob of drool to fall down his face, as his mighty brain is again proven superior to all around him. I could see the flat horizon out the window, at the beach, and from mountaintops, clearly never curving downwards in the slightest. Talking about the horizon as if exactly what you are looking at isn't where the curve is. You don't see it curving down from you because it's curving down from you. That's how it works, you colossal buffoon. And surely on a flat earth, you either wouldn't have a horizon at all, or at the very least it would go much, much further, especially as you went up your mountain that you have totally been to. Yet I was being told the earth was a ball, and that if I dug a hole straight down far enough, I would pop out in China and find more sky below me. Well, whoever told you that was a complete idiot and did you a disservice. One, you would find much hot sauce that would prevent you from doing anything. And even if that wasn't there, you wouldn't get any further than anyone else has to this point anyway. And I am pretty sure you wouldn't even get that far. The people who have done that, well, those are some smart cookies, you, not so much. And let's say, if by, well, literal magic, you did manage to go through the earth. The sky on the other side wouldn't be under you. It would be above you, because you would necessarily have to do a flip halfway through, because gravity. When the teacher then insisted that everyone in Australia was actually living their lives upside down relative to people on the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah, again, that's an incredibly unhelpful way to put it, especially for someone like you and their amazing powers of not getting shit. Their up or down attitude, well, they are all relative to the planet, and in that regard, they are all stood up away from its centre of mass. That's the only up that matters. I remember raising my hand confused. Well, that's the first accurate statement I think I've ever heard you say. Yes, you were confused. You were confused then, you are confused now, and you will remain confused until you stop relying on your own pitiful senses in order to determine things and actually learn how to do a science for once in your goddamn life. And asking, why don't people in the southern hemisphere fall off of the ball? Okay, cool. I wonder what answer they gave, and if it was as unhelpful as the rest of their alleged statements. That, or it's a good answer and Eric here simply won't be able to brain it and default to No, wrong, 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 you am wrong, me am right, end of discussion. To which my teacher readily replied with the heliocentric model's one-word magical answer for all critical questions. Gravity. Um, gravity isn't a magical one-word answer, it's the name of a very well-studied and demonstrated phenomenon. Did you ask the teacher to explain that, or did you decide that that wasn't good enough, but any elaboration would now no longer suffice? 
and not even look for the answers you apparently seek beyond this classroom, which apparently has the world's least helpful science teacher. An invisible force, strong enough to hold the world's oceans, buildings, and people stuck to a rapidly spinning ball while simultaneously weak enough to allow birds, bugs, smoke, steam, and helium balloons to completely evade its grasp. What are you talking about? They don't evade its grasp at all! I bet you think you know everything there is to know about how gravity works, but you say shit like that and demonstrate that you haven't got a f***ing clue what the hell you were talking about. Birds, helium, and everything else, pretty much, absolutely are within gravity's grasp. Like, birds have to work really, really hard to expel a fair amount of energy to get into the air alone. But they, just like the balloons, and pretty much anything else, can't just escape Earth's gravity. Otherwise, instead of strapping gigantic fucking rockets absolutely stuffed with fuel onto a relatively tiny payload just to get into orbit, well, that would have never been necessary. We would just strap a shitload of balloons and simply float crap into space. We don't do that. Because it literally couldn't work because of f***ing gravity, you walking dunce cap. As a child, I didn't have the vocabulary, confidence, education, or experience to contest anything my teachers and textbooks were claiming. <laughs> and you still don't have the vocabulary, experience, and definitely not a jot of education in order to do so today. What you do have, though, is confidence. Oceans and oceans of unearned confidence that makes you think that you are way smarter than you really are, and allows you to say some of the dumbest shit that I have ever heard. Sadly, a common trait amongst basically every person that I cover on this channel. Did I say sadly? I meant hilariously. But my bewildered brain never fully bought the model being taught. Bewildered brain, eh? That sounds like a very serious degenerative brain disease that is both incurable, but ultimately not deadly. It just leaves the victim in a state of constant befuddlement with a complete inability to pass reality from fiction. Which would explain a lot. And there always remained a nagging inkling in the back of my mind that Earth was not as they said. Well, guess what? Everyone has nagging inklings about all sorts of wacky shit, but that doesn't magically make that true. Like sometimes, when I'm alone and it's late at night, I get dark thoughts. What if? What if it turns out that whiskey, my muse, my flame, what if it's actually bad for me? But then of course I snap out of it and put such ludicrous ideas out of my mind. I mean, seriously. During college, I wrote my first book, Asbestos Head in which I outlined several problems with Big Bang cosmology. Oof. Well, there's that confidence. Not only did you actually write a frickin' book, more than likely with crayon and spit, but you attempted to take on the Big Bang theory, a theory which I can only presume, considering your staggering lack of understanding in every other scientific field, you know absolutely frick all about. But no, let's at least give it a shot. The first couple of lines of his book, come on. God is the infinite existence or causal creation of all matter. Ugh, okay, um, so far so predictable, but, right, okay, yeah. Asbestos head is a finite congregation of super specialized matter capable of creativity and rationale, through which he deduces that is the infinite existence or causal creation of all matter. Wait a minute, when did we get onto f in spirit science. Oh my god, what a bunch of gibberitic, metaphysical, pseudo-philosophical wank. You wrote that in school? Yeah, I can tell. It's got edgy teen written all over it. Christ. And apparently this contains criticisms of the Big Bang Theory. Well, I would be astonished if anyone could f***ing find them. Ugh. I need to go clean myself. I feel dirty and synchronistically chose the Flammarion Flat Earth painting for the cover of the book. Synchronistically? Well, isn't that cute? There is a plethora of words that you could have used to say that, but you, you funny old stick you, you managed to pick the one that made you sound the most like a complete tosser. Well done, I'm impressed, and I don't think I could have done a better job myself. After graduating, I began studying conspiracies in depth and regularly searched the internet for information on geocentricity and the flat earth.
graduating, I'm curious to know what you actually got and what it was in. One assumes it's not all that impressive if the only thing you can say about it is, well, I graduated. That's like when you get a reference from your previous job and the only thing they have to say is, they definitely came into the building relatively frequently, damning oh so strongly with the faintest of praise. The first links to show up were always from the Flat Earth Society, which made ridiculous claims like saying Earth is a flat disk constantly rising upwards through space at 9.8 meters per second squared to explain away the effects of so-called gravity. Yeah, the Flat Earth Society is dumb, but merely pointing out how they're not correct doesn't make what you say more right. You are just a slightly different kind of wrong and as silly as you see them, is about as silly as everyone else sees you, and with good cause. By the way, do the Flat Earthers have a functional model that explains how their idea works yet? No, thought not. I guess we will just have to keep using the globe model with its accurate depictions of how the world works and the fact that it's useful for navigation ETC. But I'm sure you'll get there soon. This and other spurious claims made on their website actually turned me off from researching the Flat Earth for a time. I soon continued my search, however, and began to find that there were actually entire books written about the Flat Earth in the 19th century. Well, I have a little secret about those books, and I don't know if you know this, but, uh, they're all fucking wrong. Trying to grasp reality from them is like trying to learn how not to be a total asshole from me. It's never gonna happen. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six channel Spoonstar Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships and PayPal to support directly. Finally, Follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-